Hello there. I have a DIY flower pin cushion video today. I can't wait to share with you. I'm making some um, Mother's Day presents coming up. So wanted you guys to take a look. I'm Whitney with Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots and thank you for joining me today. So now these two are my working ones I've been using for some time, but I made these a while back from a YouTube video that I watched myself. This is not my idea. This is somebody else's tutorial, which I am linking in my description below. You'll be able to see her original plan and she's very accomplished sewer. So you can take a look and see exactly how to do this with all the proper terminology. I just like to make stuff and I'm pretty much good at winging it, but I wanted you to guys, I wanted you to guys, I wanted you to see <laughs> my process and how I did it. So obviously you see here, this is a, a pin cushion. I mean, stick pins in it for sewing, for needlework. Uh, you can organize your actual sewing machine needles on them if you want. Um, I personally have just been putting all kinds of like sewing notions inside of them. So I wanted to make some, I have a couple people um, making them for, for Mother's Day presents because we, you know, it's, it's April, Mother's Day is gonna show up before we know it. Uh, but you could basically use any kind of jar, any kind of container on the bottom. I've got many different options I'm going to show you later on in the video. Uh, recycled items, cans, jelly jars, you name it. They're super cute and lots of options. So what we need, we're going to need two circles. Very easy. So I've got an 8-inch circle and a 5-inch circle. And I actually looked up on my phone and put centimeters on there for those of us or you who are not using the American system because apparently that's all the way we know how to measure. But I'm using this cardboard because it's easy. These are little cake car cake circles that I got at Michael's many years ago. Um, they still sell them in those cake aisles, but it's a perfect circle. You don't have to cut it. I just trace around it, it makes it easy. So here I shake that in front of the camera so you can see one more time my eight inch cardboard circle. Now this is a five inch circle and it's a, it's a Dollar Tree star foam disc you get these at Dollar Tree all the time, but it's like the, it was the perfect size. Now the label says it's four point something. Eh. It's five inches when I put that on my, my cutting mat there. So in any event, you need the difference in size. You can, if you, if you're good with the maths, go for it. I just listen to direction and that's how I go. Now the smaller circle, this is here Dollar Tree fabric, but I have lots of all kinds of fabric from all over. These little small circles, those are a couple remnants left over from ones I've made in the past. You see, that's, that's what we're going to make our leaves out of. So that's what you want for the smaller circles, but we're going to start on our first one here. So all you want is one circle to make the actual pin cushion. I'm going to take a pen, I'm going to trace it around and we are going to cut it out. And that is all she wrote for the actual flower part of the pin cushion in order to get started make sure you're uh you can you can go iron i had to go iron a lot of fabric but it just it was kind of like eh. so this one's here are all our leaves i just bought a bunch of greens when i saw them at dollar tree because i knew i needed them for these specific projects i like to make the leaf parts out of green when i know they're flowers otherwise i see pumpkins but that also just might be my sickness because i love pumpkins but I wanted to make all of our leaves out of green. So I'm just cutting my fabric. This is the Dollar Tree fabric you get. It's a specific size. So I'm just making double duty. So I'm gonna fold it in half so I can cut two at a time. And then each flower needs nine petals. So you're gonna need nine five inch circles. You need one large eight inch circle, but you're gonna need nine of these smaller green circles or whatever you wanna make your leaves out of, whatever color it is. Um, some other complementing fabric. So basically I, traced out the smaller circle, cutting it out. I used a couple pins to hold it together just because it is folded in half, layered on top of itself. And I did that until all of the fabric was cut. So I'd say, yes, you need nine pieces at first, but if you plan to make a lot of them, just go ahead and create your own little cutting assembly line. And this is what I did. I just cut fabric for a good, probably 20 minutes. This does not take long at all. Now we're going to make the actual squishy pink. See, I squished it. I love squishing them, by the way. I don't know what it is about it. When you, when you hold something that's cute, that's that cuteness aggression. You want to squeeze it. Yeah. I squish these pin cushions. It's just, it's, it's, let me know if you end up doing the same thing or if you have that same thing where you see something cute, you have to squeeze it <laughs> like my puppies. I squeeze them. They're so cute. Anyways, I'm going into my uh, notions here. And what we want to do is because we're going to be using embroidery floss, we need a needle with a larger eye at the top of it. So I'm trying to show you here if it focus. This is one of my larger sewing needles. I've used this. It's not a yarn needle, but it is a larger needle with a, a bigger eye at the top. Not something that you want to drop on the floor and find with your foot. Not that that has happened to me. It's happened to me. 
And um, yeah, it hurts. So here's an, an example. I bought these uh, from Joanne's Fabrics. It's a, it's a fabric store here in Las Vegas where I live. But any fabric store will have needle types like these. So if you want to pause that, you can see all the different types of needles that this comes in this little pack. But they have larger eyes on the top, so you can use thicker threads or twines or you know any type of item like that. Also, your fabrics get a little bit thicker and harder to use. Now, at first I grabbed this needle because it has a bigger eye on it with the embroidery floss. Um, What's going to happen is I'm going to switch to a smaller needle because when we get to the leaves, it's going to be thick, but you will see that. So here's a couple packs of embroidery floss. Now, anybody remember back when they were teenagers in the 80s or in the 90s? Sorry, as a, as a kid in the 80s, as a teenager in the 90s, making these bracelets, these friendship bracelets out of embroidery floss. Man, the amount of embroidery floss I talked my mother into buying for me. Wow. I made so many of those bracelets. Now, this little pack here, I had none but I am, I am definitely not a teenager anymore. So I got these two packs of embroidery floss at uh, Walmart. So I just wanted to show you guys there's all kinds of options and the colors match. So for our wonderful little farmhouse flower I'm making here with this beautiful ticking fabric, which was also from Dollar Tree, um, I'm going to use black embroidery floss. So what we do here is we're going to just take the perimeter of this circle and we're just going to pop it in the needle in and out. So you're just going to create like almost like a pleat because we're going to gather this into its own little circle. It's going to turn, we're going to turn it into its own little pocket. Now this needle is a little bit thicker than I'd planned on it. Um, the fabric is not as thin as you'd think. The Dollar Tree fabric is actually a decent fabric. It's not thin. It doesn't tear. I haven't used, I've used a few of them. So I, mean, I can't speak for every, every fabric roll they put out. I mean, obviously guaranteed something's going to come up once or one, once in a while, it's going to be like, yeah, no, but this is a decent fabric from Dollar Tree. So I was using a needle a little bit too thick. Uh, the embroidery frost didn't give me a problem. I did eventually go to find a, uh, I used to do cross stitch. I have lots of cross stitch also. There's a embroidery floss threader you can buy or you can look for. I had that in my stash. I had to go get that so I, I could make the other ones here. But you just want to continue around the whole circle until you have this cute little, basically like a little pocket. It's almost like we're making a pumpkin. <laughs> Which makes me happy because all of these would be gorgeous pumpkins. All of them farmhouse pumpkins are going to be a thing this year. I'm telling you right now, this right here, I wanted to turn into a pumpkin so badly. So after we get all the way around, I'm going to just kind of tighten it. You're not going to close it all the way up because we don't need it to be a solid bottom. We want it to be a nice, decent size. So just use your eyes, judge for yourself if it looks poofy and cute enough. Here, I felt that I needed some more fiber fill. I, I fill it with anything you have. If you have an old stuffed animal, an old pillow, I happen to have copious amounts of fiber fill because I make lots of punkies. But that's about it for the actual flower part. Now we're gonna move on to putting the little veins in it here. Again, a vein is in a pumpkin. We're gonna put the petals in the, the flower. <laughs> so we're taking the embroidery floss here. And if I could stop pointing out the same thing to you, geez, Whitney, come on. So I'm gonna take the black embroidery floss again, and we're going to create our petals for our flower. So once again, before I had my needle threader for the embroidery floss, it takes a minute to get the thread back through the needle. Come on, you can do it. Now, there may be a better way someone else could show me to do this. I, you know, it's the same thing as when we're making pumpkins. Fabric pumpkins are super fun. It's just, this is the part where you need to just, you're gonna need to hold things down. So you start coming through the bottom, up through the top. And I went basically from left to right. So if I went up, up and around on one side, I would come up through the middle and go around on the opposite side. So with my left hand, I'm holding the tension of the actual uh, embroidery floss from where we started. And then with my right hand, I'm pulling harder every time I actually make a, a, a complete loop and I'm making a pedal. You can adjust your embroidery floss so that your petals are different sizes. You can also do that when you're done as well. And you can also manipulate the fiber fill inside to get things to look a little bit even. You can add some more, which I will show you that I do that in, in, just, a, in just a moment. But I put about, oh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I put six in each. I didn't want to put too many, but again, it's becoming, you don't want to put too many petals. You want to put too little. You'll, you'll see because you'll know when your eyes are happy. <clears throat> I did not pull enough embroidery floss through the front. And you see here, I've ran out. So I have this little short piece that I have to really tight, tightly hold on to. But in the, in the end, I did win. So <laughs> I'm holding with the tension. I'm just putting like more than like six, like six or eight or 10 or way more double knots than you actually need because I don't ever want this to come undone. But we're also gonna be using hot glue on the bottom to secure it. So here, this is what I mean when you can actually, you can move your little uh, petals around, you can manipulate the fiber fill inside there. This is sped up six times. So it's actually kind of funny to watch my fingers move so fast. I didn't realize I was messing with it so much. It's like, 
Reminds me of little like ants in the ant farm. But there we go. You see a flower? You see a poofy flower? I see a really cute, fat, squishy pumpkin. But I see a flower also. Which again, flowers and pumpkins. Those are my jam. What do you guys think? What do you think? So now we are going to do our uh, not flower petals, the leaves. We're going to do our leaves for around the base of our pin cushion. Now, here's all of my green little circles I cut out. No, those are my extras. I am not going to use these today, but I figure once you get enough spares left over, you'll have a nice, nice little eclectic grouping of different fabric colors. So these are all the Dollar Tree uh, greens I had. So I'm going to pick a combination of this lighter green and this darker green. And again, we, we need nine circles. We're making a, a circle right here of nine of these little leaves. Leaves, leaves, leaves. So, and then here's another set I'm showing you. <laughs> I love the way they gather and they look they look perfect. It's almost like a lotus flower, almost like it's 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 holding it. So, I got the green embroidery floss out now. This one's not that important. You can use whatever you want because you actually don't see it. It's underneath the the actual pin cushion and you never see it. Now here you can see I got a little close to the edge of the fabric. That is not a problem, but for the first leaf I'm going to make here, I'm not going to actually use. I'm going to use one of the normal ones here. So this is how we're going to fold it. You're going to take it with your right side down. So when you're folding it over right side, show you fold it in half and then you're going to fold it in half again. Magically, they stay like that. I mean, it could be the fabric I'm using, but Again, I usually just pre-fold them all and then I can just grab them and start sewing. But the same premise is gonna apply that we used on the larger one, we're gonna use here on these leaves. So we're gonna go around the base here. And this is where I'm gonna show you. We're gonna do the in and out thing here, but you can see here that I'm struggling with upper body strength. You know, look, I am a tough cookie, okay? And at this point, with that much fabric, I had four, four layers of that fabric. I said, I'm going to probably injure myself and I want to keep my knuckles and I don't want to lose a nail and I sure don't want to feel anything go under a fingernail. So I decided to take that out and I went for a smaller needle. The eye in the needle wasn't as large, so it was a little bit, a lot of bit. It was a lot of bit more difficult to thread without an embroidery floss threader. I had a bunch of other threaders. Please ask me why I put them back in my little notions box while they were broken. I, I mean, that's like infuriating, isn't it? Like I always yell at people, don't put the milk back in the fridge empty. Don't put this away, put the, you know, don't leave your clothes on the floor. I put my threaders back in with the wires completely separated from the plastic piece. They're pointless. Why didn't I get them? I'll have to ask myself some other time. Now we're going back with a smaller needle. It's still a little bit kind of on the thicker side as far as the fabric goes, as far as being maybe a little bit more difficult but it was much easier than that thicker needle. And then I ended up using this same smaller needle for pretty much all the other three that I made. Now, if you see the same premise applies, you're gonna go in and out and in and out. So I'm just really not me measuring. You're just gonna see the gathers you're making and whatever you gotta do to kind of work that through. Once you get to your second or third or fourth leaf, you'll get a pattern or a, or a rhythm going and you'll see that it just, it starts to flow naturally and it's not really a problem. It doesn't cause any huge issues and you'll get really comfortable with it. So same premise. And then once you get it off the needle there, <laughs> Remember, we're working from a full piece of uh, embroidery floss. We're not cutting it a specific length just yet. So now we're going to take all the rest of them. So we're going to have all nine of them. I'm going ahead, I'm folding them all up right now. And we're just going to work all nine of them on there. Now, see, here's where I had those two pieces that you could see were a little bit, that pieces were cut. I put those on the inside of the circle and they don't come undone. They won't. It just, it, it's, it's, it was a decent, it was still a decent piece of fabric. That way you don't have to waste things. So I'm showing you here is to make sure that you have them facing the right way. And then you're going to do the same thing where we're going to feed the, the, the needle in and out and in and out to each side. And then as you start pushing them together on your strand of embroidery floss here, you'll see how it starts to kind of come together. And you can kind of just push them together as you're working to see you do need nine of them. I, you can cut corners, but then they don't, the gathering doesn't actually make a little leaf. It doesn't, or even just another flower petal, in my opinion, could, could be looked up like a lotus, like another flower petal, but it, it puts like that natural curve in it when it comes up to a point there. So they're facing down right now, you can see. So we're just going to go through and we're going to add them all. I did a weird pattern because nine is an odd number. So I just did four of one and five of the other, and then I placed them in a just a weird little offshoot kind of way. I did every other one. Then at some point, two of the same color next to each other. 
So whatever makes you happy because all these different patterns, all the different fabrics, if you have someone that has a specific, uh, uh, you know, they like certain things. I made one for a friend whose mother loves orchids. So I went and found some custom made orchid fabric and she's also a very good avid sewer. So she loved the present. She was very happy with it. These are really great for any time of year, not just Mother's Day. They're good for birthdays. They're good for anybody if you know a sewer. But even then, I'm not an accomplished sewer, guys. I've taken sewing classes in high school. I've been able to repair things. I'm a good mender. I've made things as a teenager and, you know, in school. I haven't really made anything out of, out of school. But um, I would like to say that I, I know some basics. I love getting notions and, and different little boxes and organizers for, for sewing. So just think of anybody you might have in your life that this could be something good for and even then if they're not putting pins in it it's cute to have a cute little poofy flower or pumpkin on the top of a jar you could put buttons in it you could put bottle caps you could put anything in it, it just makes me happy <laughs> also it pumpkins it's a cute little pumpkin i want to put a stem on that so bad and now i made a pumpkin you saw in the thumbnail i made a pumpkin i'm going to show you that i saved that one for last but so now we're going to kind of group these together you see here that i talked through it but i put the pin cushion on top so you can see how you want to kind of manipulate and it make you know kind of spread things out so that in itself right there when we're done with these leaves don't that doesn't that look like its own flower you can make that and put that on a on a on a bag or on a headband or something you don't necessarily have to use this just for your pin cushions but I love the way it turns out it's cute so now that I made this one I'm showing you my at least my fabrics I made for the other two girls so of course here's the one I told you about that's Dollar Tree punky fabric I got last year and that's just these are rest of these are um, these two larger ones those are probably I got at Walmart or Joann's just extra fabric pieces so now you can see here I've made all these little girls they're so pretty so this one is going to be our punky when we get to it that one I will show you last but look how cute it is and then this one is just another springtime, nice, bright, bright, fresh. I love the colors. Just It just worked out. And of course, all the embroidery flosses, complementing colors. And now this one I had already made a few, probably over two years ago. Honestly, guys, it's been sitting in there, but I never assembled it. So I just figured I would throw that in today because I've got the perfect Dollar Tree jar for it. So our, our canister bottoms, we have different choices. I bought this in the glass aisle at Hobby Lobby. It says I paid $1.69. I guarantee you I didn't. I guarantee you I got it probably when the glass was all maybe 30, 40, or 50% off. So again, pretty cheap. Here's a Dollar Tree jar. You've seen these many times if you're a Dollar Tree addict and you, you see all the different containers. Here is my apricot. What was apricot? Apricot mango. It was, a, it was a preserves jar. So I'm reusing it because I think the purple lid will look great with that color because I'm not going to color it, cover it. You are going to see it. And then here, this is my favorite. I love these little short quart wide mouth mason jars. I get those off of Amazon. So they are linked in my Amazon shop. If you want to see them, they're in the description and the pinned comment below. But then also from the video I watched, you'll see that in my description. She uses a tuna can. Now she kind of flips it and puts everything inside the tuna can and covers it with all kinds of nice things and ribbons and fabrics on the outside. So there's a way to do that too. And that's very inexpensive. And so let's just start on our first one. Now, this one worked out perfectly because the hole here in the leaves that I made, now again, this is not green. This is for someone that might be more into the darker colors. Um, we're going to put glue all around the outside bottom of our leaf circle and it fit perfectly around the lid on this Dollar Tree jar. Now I'm using a hot glue. It's an AdTech glue that is a multi-surface glue. So it's good on woods and metals and glass. It does hold up to a lot of um, different surfaces. I have not had this. I've made this as opposed to a few days ago from recording my voice uh, recording right now. It's solid. It's not coming apart. Not, not one bit. Now the Dollar Tree lid does come off a little bit easier than I would prefer, but hey, what do you want? It's a Dollar Tree. <laughs> It's a Dollar Tree jar. So we're, as you see, you just apply glue and we're done. Now this one already had a couple buttons put in the middle there. And then you can see here, this is how, this is how we use it. It's like that song, this is how we use it. <laughs> I had a neighbor having a pool party the other day. I could hear that song blast, blasting over the back wall. It's stuck in my head. Okay, moving on. Sorry, saw something shiny. <laughs> um, now our farmhouse flower. This one, I love the great, the bright greens with that that farmhouse ticking fabric. I just, it makes me so happy. So I'm using a Hobby Lobby jar here, but if you see here, because I don't have that cute little knob that fits there, I'm gonna fill it with a little bit of styrofoam. So I have a styrofoam junk bucket amongst all of my other junk buckets, and I'm just cutting a piece big enough that it will just fill in that hole. Because obviously, 
you, you don't have to. You could maybe ball up some paper, a little bit of twine, anything that you have extra cardboard, but the styrofoam is, it adheres to everything. And I needed something to make sure that we had enough glue on it. I didn't want to fill that hole up with glue. Now we're going to go through buttons. I love to play with buttons. I don't know what it is, but I love sticking my grubby little fingers in all the buttons and just listening to them and messing with them. And I buy copious amounts of bags of buttons from Amazon and it's fun. So I'm picking a couple buttons that complement each other. Now I'm going to tell you ahead of time, that green button doesn't stick at first. And you're going to see, I'm sitting here holding it down, thinking that if I just put my finger on it for two hours, that will make it magically work, right? Because that's what happens. If you just push harder, <laughs> if you just push harder, everything's fine, right? Yeah, no, but you'll see in a second. It doesn't pop off immediately because I'm pushing it down because I want the, the center to be squished in a little bit more. And so I take my other little flower shaped yellow button here. And then after I pop that on, you'll see here in a second, boop, comes right off. So I took my finger sander and I roughed up the bottom of the green button. I just kind of rubbed it on my hands. I put some more glue in there and now she's solid. So it just needed less of a smooth surface. The button was a little bit too glossy for my glue, apparently. And now you can see here that the lid comes off perfectly A-OK. -okay. It's a mason jar lid, so it still twists. And I love it. It's a cute little farmhouse flower that just makes me so happy. She makes me so happy. I love them. What do you think? Now, our little recycled jelly jar. I love the purple color on here. I like all these spring colors. They worked out so great. Same premise. I know if uh, you want to skip to the end because I'm going to show you the exact same thing on this. So I put my leaves down. I'm putting another filler piece of styrofoam in the middle. And then we're going to put a glue on top of all that and push down and hold our pretty little flower to the top of it. Now I'm going to take two buttons. Now this time I'm just going to rough this button up ahead of time so I can save myself the heartache of having it pop off and have to add more glue. You know, you learn by your own process sometimes. I wouldn't say it was a mistake. I would say it's my own experience. That's my XP. <laughs> and that, that's it, that's done. Now, remember, we don't wanna to put too much on here. You could add some ribbon somehow, somewhere, maybe around the jar if you want, or twine. But remember, the jars are gonna be open because we're gonna put notions inside and the tops need to be clear because we're gonna put pins on them. Oh, and here is the best for last. Here's our pretty little punky girl. Now my favorite, the I believe it's a quart jar, the wide mouth quart jar that I get from Amazon and our pumpkin and our little pumpkin leaves. So complementing color, I'd like this little brown fabric pattern that I had here, fill it in with a bigger piece of star foam because for some reason I made this one larger. I think I did that on purpose because I knew I was going to be using the larger mason jar. You spread them out a little bit more, you have more room to play with them. Same premise, keep placing them all down, glue, 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 hold it down. See the lid still opens, we're good to go. Cute on its own. Now. Here's my little junk bucket of stems because you guys know I save it. Now there's some sticks in there that I used for fabric pumpkins back in the day, but look at this. This was saved off of one of those little like gourds you get at the grocery store. That's so gorgeous. I haven't used it yet. I haven't found what I want to use it on yet, but I take them off of the pumpkins and I save them. When this, when the, when the gourds or those little punkies that you get at the grocery store, when they finally rot out from the rest of the year. Oh, here's some plastic leftovers from different Dollar Tree and Michael's pumpkins that I've used in different little stacking projects. I save the stems of everything. You know, it's just, it's a sickness. I can't help it. I have a perfect little stem right here. I'm going to use that one. I'm just going to let you know I'm using that one. But here's this, at the end of the year, see, I've just got a decent amount of them. And I buy ones with pretty stems. Like I protect them in the cart. And when I go to check out, I tell them, please do not put this in a bag and do not break this stem because I've been babysitting it the entire grocery trip. And I'm very proud of my stems. They make it home and they're pretty. I still have three on my counter right now. It's April 12th today. And I have three of those little pumpkins on my counter. Still, still good. And I'll, I'll save those stems. Now we're gonna make tendrils. So I'm having some 22 gauge green floral wire. I've had this in my stash for ages. It comes in handy for certain things. Now I am gonna add a little bit of decoration because a pumpkin has to have tendrils. I'm just taking just a random length of wire, wrapping it around a used piece of stem. I wrapped it a little bit too tight and I couldn't get it off. So I had to take it off and rewrap it. And then I kind of worked smarter, not harder here. And I twisted the stem and then got the wire off towards the top. So basically take your wire and wrap it around something that you can form it onto. I usually use hot glue sticks, but that would have been too big for this particular project. So something smaller like a dowel that's not got little ridges on it. I use a lot of my stems over from floral pins or floral, um, floral bundles and picks because they're good to stir. They're good for, you know, to use as tools and such. So that's what I did with this. 
So you're going to take your wire after you did that, and it's going to be sharp enough, especially if you cut it at a diagonal right here. You can pop it through the fabric, and we're going to be putting the stem there in the middle. So a combination with the glue and the stem, you got a good support system and it. it won't come out. It's not coming out. It's so cute. It's not. And then here we have, I had to have another one. I put the, um, I put our little um, tendril on and I was like, you know, I need another one. So here we go. I made a second tendril. I couldn't help it. She's so cute. I love her. So a uh, second tendril in we're going to start gluing everything down. So I put a, I put a lot of glue and I pushed this one down into the bottom. You could kind of feel it went into the styrofoam. So that was just a, a lucky guess on that one. And then for the second one, it's kind of more propped up under the stem that it is through the actual fluffy part of our punky. And then here I'm removing some of our extra little glue gloopies. And look at that. I can't help it. I always have to touch everything. I have to touch it like 50 times and squeeze it. Look how cute it is. I even forget that it's a pin cushion. I just want to stare at it. It's like a little cute pumpkin topper for anything. You put candy in that and just stare at it year round. <laughs> but think of your colors and your options for anybody for anything. Again, we don't have to even use them for pin cushions, but the fact that, you know, some of these smaller pins and these fabrics look great with them, you don't have to worry about anything. It's also very inexpensive and very fast. If you got a production line going, you got a lot of things, you just cut a bunch of circles and then you just start gluing. It, it, it just turns out so much and it's so much fun to see them all grouped together. And then you can get all your gifts ready to give out and it makes them happy. Also neighbors, if you got a neighbor that's a sewer, anything else like that. These are really good gifts, really good little quick and easy little bundles of happiness. So tell me what you think. This was a little bit of a different video. So I wanted to say thank you guys for, for just being here and joining me every week. A lot of you have become my fuel and I just, I love seeing you, your guys' comments. I love seeing that you join me pretty much every video. It's, it's very warming to see that my channel is growing and you guys are just, you guys are just amazing. So that's it today. I just made a bunch of pin cushions and I've got more to make too. So don't think that that's just what it is. I just didn't want to bore you. I mean, we're coming up on almost like 27 minutes of pin cushions, but hey man, thanks for joining me. It was fun. God, they're so cute. Just so cute. So I have a coffee page. I want to thank everyone who has already donated to me and who will donate in the future. I, uh, if you have felt that you've ever learned anything from me or you just enjoy my videos, consider buying me a coffee. It helps my channel grow and it helps me keep going. And with all that said, I love you more than I can possibly say in words. Many hugs, happy crafting, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.